The gentlelady yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Representative Obonoti, for five minutes of questioning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and Administrator Regan, thank you very much for uh, your testimony today. I'd like to discuss something that is a vital consequence to my constituents in California's 23rd District. Uh, recently, the California Air Resources Board applied to the EPA for a waiver that would allow them to implement what they call the in-use locomotive rule in California. They're seeking to require all uh, line locomotives to operate in a zero emissions configuration starting in the year 2035 and to prohibit the use of any locomotive that's older than 23 years old. Uh, the problem with that is that there are currently no locomotives available that are even close to meeting the, the definition of that requirement. Uh, if you just look at the amount of energy required to move, the weight that those locomotives move, uh, a diesel locomotive has the equivalent of about 100 megawatt hours of energy. The, the best all electric locomotives that we have now that are in testing are around the order of five to eight megawatt hours. So it's, 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 we're not even close to even having a locomotive available that will meet that rule. Uh, another problem, and this is one that affects my constituents directly, is that uh, BNSF Railways is in the process of constructing a, a new one and a half billion dollar intermodal transfer facility in my district in the town of Barstow. That's going to add about 20,000 jobs to my district. It's also going to have the effect of taking uh, millions of truck hours off the roads in California because it will allow freight to be offloaded off of ships in the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, transferred by rail to the intermodal facility in Barstow and then uh, distributed by rail to other parts of the country instead of being on trucks. And as I'm sure you're aware, given your position, it's about 10 times more efficient to transport freight by rail than by truck. It's much less carbon in the atmosphere. It's better for everyone to do this. The problem is if you, if the EPA approves CARB's waiver request, BNSF is not going to build that transfer facility in Barstow because they would be required to have all electric locomotives that don't exist. Uh, and so they're gonna put that facility in Arizona. So uh, in a way I should thank CARB. I've gotten more constituent engagement on this issue than on any other issue in my 19 years in elected office. And uh, I brought you a little gift here. This is uh, several thousand letters from my constituents that they've written in, uh, all of them opposing uh, the, uh, the uh, waiver request from CARB that they would need to implement this. So uh, first question for you, can you tell me what the timing is on the EPA's ruling on the waiver request on this issue? Well, I can tell you that all of the issues that you've raised, we're hearing as well. Um, and listen, by law, California has the right to submit these waivers. Um, there are eight waivers that before, are before us, including this locomotive waiver. And so we're working with CARB to try to prioritize these waivers because they require, as you've just laid out, a lot of technical rigor and the appropriate resources to make the right decision. I'll have my team follow up with you on the timing for all of the waivers, including locomotive. But I can tell you that we're going through a very uh, thorough evaluation right now, and we've got a lot of things to consider. Uh, I thank you. Do you have a timing on whether or not, uh, on when you're going to make a decision on the waiver? I'll have our teams connect on that. I don't have the specific timing of that waiver and where it is in that process. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, as you have just pointed out, CARB has the right to make the request, but the EPA has the right to approve or deny the requests. And the Clean Air Act uh, explicitly preempts state regulation of uh, interstate commerce assets such as locomotives. Uh, why on earth would we as a federal government allow a state to create their own regulations? I mean, wouldn't that, when we have 50 different state regulations on locomotives, uh, wouldn't that completely destroy our ability to have a locomotive go from state to state? Well, one of the reasons that we are spending time and giving careful consideration to these waivers is uh, I have pledged and so have my team members to follow the science and follow the law. We have to be sure that any action that we take does both of those things, especially follow the law. And so we're giving some careful consideration to these waivers. Um, they're going through the evaluation process. I don't want to get ahead and project or predict whether we're going to deny or approve 
I will say that we're going to go through a thorough process. It'll be transparent, and I'd love for our staffs to keep working with yours on where we are in the process to be as transparent as possible. Well, that's, I look forward to doing that, and uh, happy to partner with you on that issue. Uh, I am confident that if we follow the science, it's going to be very clear that, uh, first of all, the technology to implement this does not exist, and second of all, that forcing freight off of ports onto trucks instead of uh, being transported by rail is actually much worse for the climate than uh, trying to uh, force electric uh, locomotives that, that uh, we currently don't have the technology to, uh, uh, to comply with in the first place. So I've, I've sent yesterday a letter to you signed by 74 members of Congress. Uh, every single uh, member of the Republican California congressional delegation has sent you a letter on this issue. Over half of the members of this committee have sent you a letter on this issue, uh, including all of the Re Republican members. Uh, and so I uh, would ask that you work with us on this uh, and uh, recognize the serious consequences of allowing CARB to go forward with this very misguided proposal. You have my commitment to work with you all, be transparent and, and be fair. And so we're going to uh, again, go through this process, evaluate it very carefully, and, and there will be no surprises. Right. I look forward to that. Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you.